joint work by uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Sabina Alkar and um, Adriana Konkoni. So this year, uh, I mean, every year we try to do analysis based on the multidimensional poverty index that OFI has developed based on the methodology proposed by Professor James Foster and um, Sabina Alkair. And this year, our objective was to um, explore the distributional issues um, among the multidimensionally poor. Uh, and this is one way of looking at uh, those multidimensionally poor who are facing a uh, much more severe form of deprivations and to explore um, where we stand at this moment uh, based on our empirical application on, on um, nearly 50 developing countries. So uh, indeed, understanding different degrees and kinds of poverty helps in their removal. It is quite well known that if we just use head count ratios, uh, then uh, we can give deliberate incentive for the policymakers to uh, ignore the situation of those that are poorest because you get maximum gain just by reducing the number of poor and that can happen just by reducing the number of uh, marginally poor, even ignoring um, the poorest of the poor. It has also been argued in the literature that poorest of the poor may be characteristically quite different and may require different kind of policies and different kind of assistance. Uh, there are literature uh, proposed by Michael Lipton, Deverooks, Barbara Harris White. Also, deprivations among the poorest may reflect more chronic form of deprivation. It has also been um, argued in the literature. Recent debates and goals. Um, of course, World Bank has uh, mentioned that the aim is to uh, eliminate poverty. It's not just eliminate, reduce drastically dollar uh, 1.2 have a day poverty by 2030. There has also been the discussion of uh, understanding shared prosperity, looking at the growth of the bottom 40% of the population. At the same time, the high-level panel on post-2015 development agenda has mentioned that the poorest uh, did not, uh, we did not, or MDGs did not focus enough um, on the poorest. So amidst all these uh, goals and objectives, certain concerns remain. Of course, the first one is does reducing dollar 1.25 a day automatically reduces deprivations in other dimensions? Maybe not. And there are empirical findings. It has not been the case. And dollar 1.25 a day actually um, is included in the first goal of, of MDGs. Is it sufficient to look at deprivations in different dimensions separately? We have MDGs looking at them separately. Does it, uh, does it make sense or there is need to look at them uh, jointly? What method is appropriate that respects the ordinal nature of dimensions? Some dimensions that we have, they are cardinal in nature, like income, but there are dimensions and indicators that are more ordinal in nature where you only know the orders, uh, the categories, but you have no idea uh, uh, what is the difference between these categories are. You may have, suppose, uh, categories of sanitation facilities. You have piped water to uh, include it in the house. You have, uh, sorry, for the sanitation, you have uh, flush toilets. You have uh, open defecations and other categories. What are the distance between categories? Are they the same as we uh, assume in some other measures? Maybe not. Uh, and then finally, does the overall improvement ensure improvement among the situation of the poorest? So all these things are, are valid concerns. And in today's presentation, I will mostly be focusing on uh, the final part, of course, based on the uh, other three concerns. So the, our approach is going to be a multidimensional approach which will take into account joint distribution of deprivations. They will try to look at the distributions, uh, deprivations together rather than separately. We will apply a counting approach, which means that it respects the ordinal nature of dimensions. And then we will try to see if I, we can understand how we can understand destitution. So the main concerns for this paper um, is how do we legitimately use ordinal information to identify the destitute. And of course, our approach is based on um, Sabinalkar's and James Foster's uh, 
counting approach or multidimensional poverty measurement. And the distributional concern is how has poverty uh, reduced among destitutes in comparison um, the multidimensionally poor. Now, how were the poorest of the poor referred um, in the, in the uh, literature? Various terms have been used, ultra poor, destitute, extreme poor, no agreement or hierarchy on this hierarchy has been, has been, has been made. We choose the term destitute because it has been used more in, um, a mu more as a multidimensional concept, whereas ultra poor, as you'll see here, has been used more in terms of uh, the monetary poverty uh, literature. Um, Lipton, for example, in 1983, uh, identified the destitute based on those um, eating below 80% of dietary energy requirement and spending 80% or more of total income on food. Similar kind of um, uh, approaches has been followed by Kakwani and Ellis. Other monetary approaches, Cornea studied um, you know, ultra poverty in Eastern European countries during transition. Stephen Klassen and others have studied uh, ultra poverty in South Africa. IFPRI tried to identify the destitutes as those earning 0.5 or 0.5 uh, cents a day or lower and so on. Uh, there has also been some um, applications by uh, the non-governmental organizations like BRAC in Bangladesh, uh, another NGO, Bardhan in um, a district of Murshidabad in West Bengal in, um, in India. They, however, used, along with income, some other multiple criteria to identify Fayda ultra poor. So, I mean, of course, it looks like there has been interest in understanding the situation of those who are the poorest rather than, than just being poor. But here, in, in ultra poverty literature, the focus has remained mostly in terms of, of income, at least in, in academia. Literature and identification of destitute, although as I said, it has not been categorized systematically. Deverux proposed identifying destitute using inability to meet subsistence need, assetlessness, and dependence on transfers. Deverux is, is, I find, the only person who actually acknowledges that the destitution, and also Barbara Harris White, that destitution should be understood as a concept, as a multidimensional concept, rather than just in terms of, in terms of the monetary dimension. Elise, however, took an interesting approach, identifies destitute as those who are ultra poor and have a labor dependency ratio of three or more. So there is a clear hierarchy for the first time in this, in this particular, particular paper where destitutes are presented as a subset of ultra poor. In our paper, paper however, uh, we use the counting approach framework to identify uh, the destitute using a multidimensional concept. Just to present very briefly uh, the counting approach as developed by James Foster and Sabin al uh, So we have a matrix and uh, we denote the achievement of a person uh, in particular dimension by X, I, J. So we have I persons and we have J dimensions. Each dimension has a deprivation cutoff based on which a person is identified as deprived or not in that particular dimension and a deprivation status value, which we denote by GIJ, is assigned. If the person is deprived, a value of one is assigned. If a person is not deprived, a value of zero is assigned. And so this is the deprivation uh, matrix. This is called the deprivation matrix, which contains values of zero and ones. Deprived means zero, one, non-deprived means zero. Once a relative weight, I'm not going to discuss and going to discuss uh, very broadly how the weights are determined. That, that's another uh, discussion, another session that can be spent. But some of the weights has been determined. Once the weight has been determined for each person, a deprivation score is obtained. And the person is identified as poor if the deprivation score is larger than a cutoff, than the poverty cutoff K. And we denote the set of poor by capital Z. So the identification here is denoted by rho, which is depends on the deprivation vector, or sorry, the achievement vector of a person. Deprivation cutoff, poverty cutoff, and weight. This identification function gives a value of one if the person is included in the set of poor, that means multidimensionally poor. Otherwise, 
the identification function is equal to zero. So we have three sets of parameters here generally. One is the deprivation cutoff vector, which is denoted by Z, the poverty cutoff, this dual cutoff, and the uh, weight vector. Now how to identify destitute which are going to be a subset of the poor? So the way we consider here the destitute or those who are the poorest has to be a subset of those who are identified as multidimensionally poor, which is denoted by Z. So suppose we use different deprivation cutoff, a deeper deprivation cutoff, a more stringent poverty cutoff, or another weight vector to identify those destitutes. Now it turns out that if we follow a non-union approach, that means if we set uh, an assumption that somebody has to be identified as multidimensionally poor who is deprived in at least two indicators. That is, that's when you are deprived multidimensionally. Then it turns out the weight vector must remain same. The deprivation cutoff vector has to be deeper and the poverty cutoff has to be higher. That is the condition to identify a subset of multidimensionally poor. Now within that framework, there could be different approaches. One approach that we refer as the intensity approach. What is this approach? This approach looks at the extent of multiple deprivations. So suppose you say if somebody, for, if somebody is identified in three out of 10 indicators, we identify them as multidimensionally poor, but somebody who is deprived in five or more of indicators, then we identify that person as much poorer. So you look at the intensity of multiple deprivations to identify those that are poorest. And this is, uh, this ap actually has been applied and uh, you know, in human development report to, uh, to construct uh, the proportion of severely poor. This is how they term it. The other one is actually depth approach, which we try to explore in this paper and, and show an empirical example using that. When we have ordinal variables, it prevents us to, to compute the gap or squared gap that has been used to uh, construct the well-known foster gear Thorbeck method because we do not know the distance. And if, even if we try to compute that, we do not know how accurate it is. So what could we do? One option that we could do here, we use a different set of deprivation cutoff. So instead of taking the gap, we identify the deprivations with respect to deeper deprivation cutoff. That's why we call it a depth approach. And then similarly, the rest of the uh, approach follows similarly as the identification of the MPI poor. We identify the deprivations, we take the weighted sum, compute the deprivation score of those people, and then set a poverty cutoff to identify those that are much poorer. So this is the depth approach. And this is what we will be using in this particular paper. And the other approach could be a mixed approach because you may argue, well, some may argue that multiple deprivations is more important rather than if you are deprived in smaller number of dimensions but you are severely deprived. We do not know which one is more severe or not. So one option could be to identify the severely poor and uh, poor by depth approach and then take an intersection of that. This is an approach we try to take um, in one of our paper, joint paper on India. So let me show you an example how, uh, how uh, we have implemented it. So just to give you a brief uh, slide on what is multidimensional poverty index, it was developed by uh, Sabin Alkar and Maria Masantos based on the methodology proposed by James Foster and Sabin Alkar. And it had three dimensions, it consists of three dimensions and 10 indicators. And somebody is identified as uh, multidimensionally poor if they're deprived in 33% or one third of the weighted indicators. That's k equal to one third in this case. And these are the indicators uh, that, and the deprivation cutoffs that are used to identify the deprivations and then uh, the multidimensionally poor. So what we do here in the depth approach, as we cannot take into account the gaps and squared gap, we say it deeper deprivation cutoffs for each indicator where possible. So if you see here, sorry, if you see here for schooling, 
we had earlier uh, for the original MPI case, no household member has completed five years of schooling. We use no one completed at least one year of schooling. For attendance, any school-age child in the household not attending schools up to class eight. Here, no child attending school up to the age which they should finish class six. We try to link where possible these deprivation cutoffs to uh, World Health Organization's cutoff of severe malnutrition or MDGs as much as possible. As you can see, for two indicators, electricity and floor, we could not take deeper deprivation cutoff because we only have information on access, yes or no. So it did not allow us to say deeper deprivation cutoff uh, for these two indicators. So indicators are same, deprivation cutoffs are deeper, weights are same, we also keep the poverty cutoff same. That means you have to be identified, uh, the institutes are identified if they're deprived in one third of the deeper, weighted deeper deprivation cutoff. So 49 countries that we cover, they are mostly demographic health survey or multiple indicator cluster surveys. Perfect, thank you. Um, so we include populous countries such as India, Indonesia, Pakistan, Nigeria, and Bangladesh. These 49 countries contain 1.2 billion MPI poor. And our expectation was, based on the severe deprivation cutoff, there will be a meager number of destitutes in those countries. However, we find half of the 1.2 billion MPI poor people as destitute. So of course we had the methodology, we had the selection, we did not select the indicators based on how many destitutes we are expecting. We selected the deprivation cutoff independent of that. And then we computed the results and still it was showing nearly half of those that identified as MPI poor in those countries were destitute. And of course of those destitutes, uh, this is not a surprise, probably 97.3% live in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia and over half of them live in India, but India data is old, one may argue. And what kind of progress has taken place in India, we cannot say until the data that we require to compute MPI uh, is out. So there, there had a lot, lot of claims since 2004 that poverty has gone down, but every time the poverty estimates are revised, we get a higher and higher number of poor so in 2004-05, initially they were claimed to be 28% of the population as income poor. Then it has been revised in 2009, increased to 37%, and now they have been revised, and so historical poverty rate now is nearly 45 to 48% instead of 28%. So they're approaching the number we got in 2005-06 for MPI poor. Now suppose we uh, denote the proportion of population were destitute as H bar, and the proportion of population destitute and deprived in an indicator by this notation of small h bar k bar. Then this particular uh, thing, which is here, h bar k bar over h, gives us the proportion of destitute deprived in each indicator. So this gives us an idea where, in which indicators the destitutes are deprived in. So 46% don't have anyone in their home. Of course here, you can see 67% have someone at least, home at least um, with severe malnutrition. 71% don't have electricity. 90% practice open defecation and, and so on. It's quite high. So it, it sort of gives you some idea where these, what the source of destitution, where they're coming from. We look at, uh, we plot for countries where, where we could compare uh, the dollar 1.25 a day poverty and the destitution rate, and although there appears to be a positive relationship, it's quite volatile. We cannot say it's a strong positive relationship. Uh, this is, these graph plots the percentage of population destitute versus the percentage of population MPI poor. Again, appears to be a positive relationship, but little more volatility is um, added when we present the percentage of MPI poor who are destitute as against percentage of population who are MPI poor. These are the next two slides, I'm skipping quickly. There we look at the sub-national regions and we can sim similar kind of results. Before I conclude, and this is what we are trying to uh, study at this moment, how we can use these concepts to understand um, poverty intertemporally. So here you have three examples of Malawi, Ethiopia, Pakistan. 
we could not find a better example. Of course, ideally, we should have example where you have similar level of poverty and see similar reduction and so on. We did not find that. So initial poverty, they, they were different. However, the reduction in the proportion of multidimensionally poor in percentage points were same or very similar across these three countries. So here, for, for per year, we have a reduction of 0.9 percentage point. In Ethiopia, 0.8 percentage point per year. And for Pakistan, 0.7 percentage point per year. So similar reduction in multidimensional poverty. However, if we look inside and break it down, the reduction in the change in the proportion of multidimensionally poor into change in the proportion of destitution, destitutes and proportion of non-destitutes, it unfolds the story. Here, if you look at here, there has been a reduction among destitu destitutes, and some destitutes probably uh, graduated to being non-destitute. As a result, there has been a slight increase in the number of uh, or share of non-destitutes. But overall poverty came down. For Pakistan, there has been a reduction in the number of non-destitutes and as well as reduction, it's a very modest reduction. Uh, but sorry, for the destitutes, actually there is no, almost no reduction. So the reduction of poverty actually came by reducing the number of or share of non-destitutes and not the destitutes. Unlike in Ethiopia, which also had very modest reduction in the proportion of MPI poor. However, a large reduction came by reducing the, uh, you know, the, or improving the condition of destitutes. As a result, many destitutes graduated to being non-destitutes. As a result, their proportion increased. So although they had similar reduction in overall multidimensional poverty, it was quite different when you break it down the situation of destitutes and non-destitutes. So go to the conclusion without further delay. So we outline an approach based on the counting approach framework which has not been studied. Most of the study, uh, you know, understanding the situation of the poorest of the poor has been based on the income approach. Uh, there are very few studies probably that looked at multidimensional destitution. I mean, they, they operationalize the concept of destitution but they stop short of measuring it. We try to go ahead and use this particular counting approach that satisfies some properties. To, uh, to identify the destitutes and try to analyze their situation globally. We are working on country-specific example to explore more how it can be applied on specific countries. Um, and our application still shows that at least based on the data, our data sets ranged between 2006 and 2013, and most of the data sets were uh, on or after 2010. So we cannot say, except India, of course, which, which counts uh, uh, big chunk of, of the population. Still, uh, if you look at that particular year, the share of destitutes as uh, a share of MPA poor is still quite high, it's soberingly high. So it requires focusing on the poorest of the poor as the high level panel pointed out that poorest of the poor has not been benefited. Although we have had um, a reduction in um, extreme poverty in terms of income, other dimensions and indicators, they remained still quite bad. I don't have a picture for which we try to put in our uh, upcoming book by Oxford University Press on multidimensional poverty, which clearly shows that many countries have met or very close to meeting the goal of extreme poverty reduction. But when you look beside in that graph, other indicators, child mortality, maternal health, sanitation, most of the countries, they are not even close to meeting it. So just reduction in income poverty has not met uh, or has not actually translated to reduction or improvement in other, other indicators. So it, it requires to understand the joint distribution, the joint deprivations, and understanding the poorest of the poor and then shape the policy accordingly. Thank you so much. <laughs>